Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash bookshow. Then go over to morbidlybeautiful.com as we are now part of the Morbidly Beautiful Podcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin. for hopefully the final time well definitely the final time as far as movies that we were watching here on the podcast proper for the spook show summer disaster you hear the sirens and this is for one of those truly end of the world this is a this would be a pretty bad one if it ever really happened (laughs) this is this is pretty much the end when hell has gotten too full the dead will walk the earth that's right, Dawn of the Dead. This time from 2004, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. That's what we're talking about today. Yep. And I, this was my choice. You know how we do the rotation of things. If you're a longtime listener of the Spook Show, we, you know, the four of us kind of rotate in and out who chooses some of these. The other ones, we kind of leave up the fate with a wheel spin. But every other one, basically, we choose them. So this was my choice, and it just so happened to fall this way that I technically started the Spook Show Summer Disaster with Godzilla King of the Monsters, and now I'm ending the Spook Show Summer Disaster with Dawn of the Dead from 2004. So, yep. I feel two pretty good choices, right? I mean, out of all the ones that we've watched this summer, this turned out pretty good. But we'll, we'll get into Dawn of the Dead here in just a second. Obviously, you know, uh, if you have not watched this this Dawn of the Dead, or hell, for that matter, the first Dawn of the you know the original George A. Romero's. Mm. Pause this right now. Go check them both out. Because, you know, we're, we're going to talk about both here. It's inevitable. Mm-hmm. But for sure, this one from 04, we're going we're to spoil it. So if you have not seen it, now's your, this is your warning. Pause it now. Go check it out and come back because we, we are going to spoil it for you. And we don't want to do that because this is, this is one of the better ones, I feel. One of the better horror movies of the 2000s. And, you know, we'll, we'll see where what Donnie thinks about it. Cause obviously will and the professor are not here. Unfortunately, they're wrapping up their vacations. Uh, you know, cause they were on vacation last week. They're still wrapping those up. So they weren't able to make the recording of this. So unfortunately you just get the two of us, but fortunately for us this time around, we got to watch Dawn of the dead. So we're the real winners here, right? We didn't get to take a cool vacation like those, <laughs> like those chumps, but we, we get to see Dawn of the dead and they didn't. So, but eventually, you know, I'm sure we'll get their thoughts on it too, because I know this is this is one that they enjoyed in the past as well, because we have talked about it. So, so yeah. But before we dive into it, we'll go ahead and toss out some of the usual information. We always want to remind you to go check out the Center of the Spook Show universe at aaspookshow.com. From there, you can listen to our whole podcast archive. You can go to our YouTube channel from there and check out our. We've got four or five pretty great YouTube series going on over there. So we highly encourage you to go over there, subscribe. Click the bell to be notified, all that jazz. Like the videos, watch them. Because, I mean, you know, we do put a little bit of extra work into that stuff. And they come out just about every week. I mean, we've always got stuff going on. And, of course, the podcast episodes themselves go up there, too. So, tons of stuff over on our YouTube channel. We encourage you to check that out. Also, patreon.com slash Show. That helps us, obviously, if you become a patron of the show financially, so to speak. It kind of keeps the, the wheels of commerce rolling around here. But you also get a lot of cool extra shit over there. If you check us out there, like video minisodes every month with the, including the library, the professor, the ever popular craps for peace theater segments or shows oh, yeah. every month. Um, so we encourage you to go check that out over on Patreon and you can get to all that from a So without f- any further ado, we're going to toss to the trailer for Dawn of the Dead from 2004. Hey Vivian. And I look, I can go backwards. Let me see. Hey, that's amazing. Hey. Hey, you. (sighs) 
Vivian, honey, are you okay? just been informed that we are going off the air and switching to the emergency broadcasting system. Look up the road, there's a lot more of them. Why are they coming here? Maybe they're coming for us. The sooner or later they're going to get in here. Baby slow before. It's only a matter of time. It's coming. They'll find a way in. Oh god. All right, there you go. That's the trailer for that. So you've seen this before, right? This isn't the first time yeah. you've watched it. Yeah. 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 What do you remember what, do you remember enjoying it like uh back then when it came out? Like did you sit in the theater? Did you really like it? Where where were you kind of back then on it? Um I I enjoyed it probably well, I I know I enjoyed it much more back then than I did kind of now. You know, we talked about this last week with um Snakes on a Plane. But I really think it bears repeating here too. Like, once again, we'll borrow from Cinema Nine podcast. Does it hold up? Because you know this is—it's hard to believe this thing came out almost twenty years ago. I mean, it was—it yeah. was, it was over nineteen years ago this came out. It premiered March tenth, two thousand four, at its big Los Angeles premiere. But it was released mm. roughly, you know, nine days later, March nineteenth, two thousand four, wide. So we're over 19 years ago, this movie, and it, it does not feel like it was 19 years ago when this came out, but that's just cause we're old. But <laughs> as far as like the film you see on the screen, it definitely feels a lot like 2004 though. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And in good ways and bad, you know, because it's dated, but you know, if you think about it, if you think, think about when we watched the original Dawn of the Dead last year, I think, we talked about how dated that was, right? It feels like 19, what was it? 1979, I think it came out. Yeah. It feels like it. So if you, if you compare it to that for a second, that, that as much as that one is of its time, this one really is of its time as well. Yeah. You know, for, for better or for worse. So, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it when we start comparing them and talking about, you know, what we liked and disliked about this, but it's definitely, I don't think you can deny it's of its time. Mm. But this was produced by Universal Pictures, Strike Entertainment, New Amsterdam Entertainment, and distributed by Universal Pictures. <clears throat> it's rated R, no surprise. If you've ever seen it, no, no fucking surprise. Total runtime of one hour and 41 minutes. On IMDb, it's listed as an action slash horror. Uh, it was filmed in uh, parts of Ontario, Can mostly in Ontario, Canada region, Toronto area. And uh, other smaller parts were filmed in California and Florida uh, for a budget of $26 million and went on to a worldwide gross of $102.3 million, which I think by most measures would be considered a, a success, especially oh, in yeah. 2004, but oh, uh, for a yeah. horror movie. But to break $100 million, very impressive. I've got the uh, top 10 in the box office the weekend that it opened. So this is the domestic box office here in the U.S. for the weekend of March 19th. Through the 21st, 2004. Number 10, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. So that's one of your all-time classics there. That was in number 10 that week. Number 9, Fifty First Dates. That's the Adam Sandler, <laughs> Drew Barrymore flick. Uh, number 8, Agent Cody Banks 2, Destination London. You got me. 
Uh, number seven in its opening week. This is a classic too. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I, I could see that playing on Colt Corner one of these days. I haven't seen it. Uh, it's 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 a good flick. Or at least I remember it. Now, granted, you know, nineteen years later, right? Yeah. But I remember at the time, like that was a great flick. Uh, number six, Hidalgo. Number five, Secret Window. That's another uh, horror movie playing at the time. That was mm. a Stephen King adaptation. Number four, Starsky and Hutch. That uh, Ben Stiller, I think Owen Wilson, right? <clears throat> Comedy. Number three, in its opening weekend, a thriller, Taking Lives. Number two, and th- this was, it had been planned for a month. It was in its fourth week at the time, and it was kicking some major ass. The Passion of the Christ. Uh, it had almost made $300 million at this point in four weeks. So, yeah, it was. The Passion of the Christ the kicking major the, ass. Kicked major, Christ was kicking some ass in the box office. Once again, that doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but it, here, here it is. Yeah. And how messed up is this? What beats Christ at the box office? <laughs> the Undead. <laughs> Dawn of the Dead came in number one that weekend with uh, $26.7 million in its opening weekend for Universal. Mm. So, yeah, it's, yeah, Passion of the Christ. That's one of those movies I always classify as like, it was well done. I, I mean, I saw it at the time. I, I, I'm pretty sure I even went to the theater and saw it back then. But it's like, it's not one of those movies that bears repeating. You know, like, once you've seen it once, you've seen it. You don't need to, it's not yeah. one you're going to go buy and rent and live mm-hmm. over and over again. It's like, well, man, that's messed up. I ain't never watching that again. But yeah, there you go. Dawn of the Dead, zombies beat out Jesus at the box office. <laughs> and then this weekend in 2004, life. yeah, well, sometimes it happens. Yeah, of course, this is directed by Zack Snyder. And, and here's one thing that I had forgot about is that it was written by James Gunn. I had completely forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Until yeah, I saw, I, you know, I, I'm sitting there watching it and I saw the credits. I'm, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. And that really, mm-hmm. if you think about it, when you compare this to like a lot of other James Gunn stuff later and Zack Snyder stuff too, right? You yeah. can see his influence there with the music cuts and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, like, because that's really one of those things that James Gunn, Snyder to an extent as well, but especially James Gunn is known for is like his, his soundtracks, his, his music choices are usually on point. And I think that's a big part of what makes this movie work. But yeah, directed by Zack Snyder, who, you know, went on to both, both really. And James Gunn, obviously with the screenplay, two of the bigger wheelers and dealers in Hollywood for, for, you know, the last, what, 15 to 20 years, pretty much ever Mm -hmm. since this, right. James Gunn became a little bit bigger a few years later on with guardians of the galaxy and stuff like that. His stuff for Disney and Marvel. But yeah, I mean, it really kind of started here for them as far as like, you know, going from zero to 60, so to speak, right. Like really, Becoming the big blockbuster guys. It stars Sarah Polly as Anna, Ving Rames in an awesome role as Kenneth, uh, Jake Weber as Michael, Makai Pfeiffer as Andre, Ty Burrell, who was who went on what was God, what was that show he was on forever on ABC? Um Modern Family. Remember he plays the asshole oh, yeah. it, yeah. Ty Burrell yeah. as Steve. A, a host of others, you know, so, some notable name or you know, faces and stuff like that. But those are probably your like Matt Frewer. He's in this. That that was a cool little, you know, it's a small part, but he's in it. Um, mm-hmm. and, a, and a handful of cameos that I'm sure we'll go through when we're talking about the movie. But, uh, yeah, great cast, though. I mean, I felt like a couple are kind of, you know, eh, whatever they are, what they are. But, you know, I mm-hmm. think your principal, your principal uh, players here is a pretty good casting, right? Really, I mean, background stuff. I mean, like, as far as just comparing this to the original Dawn of the Dead, I mean, for the most part, it's not like, Blow, blow by blow, tit for tat, a remake. Yeah, It's mostly yeah. like, let's just take the concept, the idea of the world has gone to shit because of a zombie apocalypse. Now this group of people seek refuge inside of a mall. It's like a reimagining. It is, yeah. I, that's probably a better way to put it because it's not a, it's definitely not a full-on remake, but you're taking a lot of the similar themes and ideas and and playing with them here. And bringing them up to date as far as like comparing from 1978 to 2004. How do you think they did as far as just comparing this to the original? Um, although they weren't setting out to make a remake of it. How do you think, do you think the theme still play even there in 2004 that, you know, Romero was going for 1978? Do you think they still play pretty well here? Fast forward to 2004. Yeah. I mean, even if you, to me, the, even though you, you, you do have the gore, um, to me, this is more action than than it is horror. If you give this a different title altogether, 
and completely disassociated from Romero at all. I think you now maybe is it is it just the situation because it being so similar that does that or you know what I mean like just because the setting is basically the same, right? Yeah. Although you're in a mall. Yeah, you're in, you're in the mall and they're just trying to survive there as long as they can until they eventually reach a point where they can't anymore. You know, so that that's where the similarities are for the most part. But the the consumerism themes and everything that Romero was going for, I don't think they're not as heavy handed in this. Yeah. You know, because clearly Romero always had that thing of subtext, right? He's he's mm-hmm. always trying to like, well, look at the, the the pretty zombie stuff here, but like he's really there's like a morality play going on, kind of, you know, <laughs> like with a lot of his stuff. Yeah. Here they didn't. I don't think they're going for that. There's a little bit of that there, but not as much. I don't think. Clearly, they. I don't think they were aiming for that. I think they just wanted something that was a little bit more over the top as far as some gore is concerned. Now that, that is questionable when you're comparing this one to the original in the sense of like, there's plenty of gore in both. It's, it's, it plays differently though. You know, Mm -hmm. it really does. And because it, that one in 78 was like, had such a low budget and it was so, you know, the independent part of it and everything, it doesn't hold up as well. It looks like a zombie movie from 1978. Yeah, like, but that to effect, me that's the, the appeal, though. It is, it is, but I think I don't think it's very fair to take points away from this one because they didn't do. They could have done more practical effects. Yeah, right. They could have. Yeah, and I think they did plenty here. I mean, I didn't dive deep into the the making of. I didn't watch any featurettes or anything like that. But there's definitely more. CGI type stuff going on here, right? Yeah. Well, but, this was also, you know, <laughs> Zack Snyder's first first feature. Once again, we bring up the debate, and this would be better if uh, this is where it would be better if the professor was here to talk about it. The difference between the Romero version and this, but zombie movies in general, the mm-hmm. slow zombies versus the fast yeah. zombies, because I think this is really where the debate comes to a head. Because remember, we talked about that when we uh, did Twenty Eight Weeks Later a few weeks back. But I think it really is more of a direct comparison here because those 28 days, 28 weeks later movies, that's debatable whether they're zombies anyways, right? Yeah, they feel like zombie movies, but they're not really zombies. This is a zombie movie, okay? So now you're getting a direct comparison. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the slow plotting, we're coming to get you Barbara type (laughs) Romero zombies? Or do you prefer these, like, you know, they're coming to kill your ass, they're running after you kind of zombies. Yeah. I mean, I always prefer fast because I mean, you, you know, when, when they're slow, you have time to prepare, you know, there is, there is no element of surprise. Yeah. You have time when it's, you know, uh, sped up and, you know, paced, you know, it, you don't honestly have a, sped you don't, up. You but don't have as it, much time to react to like, yeah. Oh fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, you know, it lends more realism. I guess. Well, I'm going to say realism, but um, well, maybe that's as much realism as you can get <laughs> with a zombie movie, right? Yeah, I don't know. They say uh, this is probably kind of dumb if you think about it, but uh, um, you know, they say youth is wasted on the young. But if you're a new zombie, you're a, a young <laughs> zombie. You know, <laughs> that just means you, that just means you're going to eat better a little longer. You know. <laughs> Yeah. That, yeah. That's another thing about this one is they don't really talk about the passage of time as as good as that original. Because remember in that one, they kind of like, she's uh, in the original that uh, the main girl is pregnant and they kind of, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of go along with that and you know, there's this time frame where like she's going to have a baby. So yeah. you know that they're roughly there, what, nine months or so, whatever. There, there's a passage of time. Seasons change. This one feels more like they're there for a while. They they end up surviving maybe what weeks months maybe, probably more like weeks and then they they bail out of there. It doesn't feel very long that they're there. Um, whereas that one, like remember they had set up house, had kind of like cordoned off themselves their own apartment on the other side over there and everything. Yeah. It's like that that feels a lot different here. You get more of a frenetic pace with this one for sure. It's more nonstop, and that one you mm-hmm. kind of slow down and yeah. You can Let's assess the, the situation. Yeah, yeah, and, this one, no, there's not much time for assessment. You know, like you have your moments, but this is more fast paced, I think. Hurry 
hurry, hurry, step right this way, folks, for the most extravagant array of refreshment goodies ever assembled under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking, taste-tempting candies of finest quality. Enjoy popcorn exploded into tender, delicious, crispy bites of crunchy goodness. Enjoy the tops in cool, refreshing soft drinks. If you want to enjoy some refreshments, this is your opportunity. There will now be a short intermission. For you, the listeners of the All-American Spook Show podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. So I hopped on all over to audible.com. I just typed in Dawn of the Dead to see what would pop up. And sure enough, we've got, surprise, surprise, we've got a few things. I don't know how many of these we read last year when uh, we did the original Dawn of the Dead, but we'll go ahead and read them out again. Dawn of the Dead by George A. Romero and Susanna Sparrow. That one is just over seven hours long, and that's an Audible exclusive. And then we've also got The Living Dead by George A. Romero and Daniel Krause. That one is over 27 hours long, so it's a long one. Um, it says The Living Dead, a new novel, so I, I assume this you know plays off of his uh, his tr- trilogy, his or I guess it ended up being more of a trilogy with Night of the Dead or Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead. What is it? Uh, Dawn of the Dead? No, Dawn. Of, what, which one am I thinking? Dusk. Day of the Dead. Fuck. Uh, no, Day of the Dead. Yeah. Day of the Dead, and then he had the Land of the Dead and all that shit later on. Mm. So I, I would assume it plays into that some way. But yeah, if that interests you, we've also got Dead by Dawn. A a novel, Mike Bowditch Mysteries, book 12. Good Lord. That one's uh, almost nine hours long. So, yeah. handful of other things that pop up here. So, n- no shortage of uh, post-apocalyptic type Dawn of the Dead, zombie apocalypse type shit over on Audible. So, if any of that interests you, you can go to audibletrial.com slash spookshow. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash spookshow to try out your free audio book. So, now I'm going to hop on back over to IMDb and I'm going to click on plot summary to see what pops up and let's see there's got to be a few for this one this being as popular as it is and of course what do you know there is um all right i'm gonna read the short one then the long one because i know donnie you like that so much a nurse a policeman a young married couple a salesman and other survivors of a worldwide plague that is producing aggressive flesh-eating zombies take refuge in a mega midwestern shopping mall that's the brief one. Now, this is the long one, and this was submitted by Keno Reeves over on IMDb. What'd you say, Keanu Reeves? No, Keno Reeves. <laughs> on the hottest day of the summer, a Milwaukee nurse named Anna has just gotten off work to cuddle up with her husband, not paying any attention to an emergency broadcast involving a plague that is sweeping the nation. When her next-door neighbor, a little girl, wanders into her bedroom, she sinks her teeth into the neck of Anna's husband, Louis, and no sooner does Louis die from blood trauma, he's back on his feet and trying to bite Anna. Taking off in her car, Anna watches in horror as the city becomes a virtual hell zone as people begin to feed upon people until she crashes her vehicle. Rescued by tough lawman Kenneth, Anna and a group of other survivors decide to hide out at the local Crossroads Mall where they begin to learn through news broadcasts that the plague is turning civilians into primal, carnivious... Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Carnivorous cannibals with an insatiable hunger for human flesh. And the only way to take these bad boys down is by shooting them in the head, which should terminate all brain activity. The group decides to hold up at the mall until a rescue team can come back and pick them up. But problems begin to arise when the infected start making their way toward the shopping center in search of more survivors. I think that was one of the themes, too, in the original was that, like, why are they all coming here? Because this is what they remember. You know, they they remember Mm. coming to the mall and shopping and everything like that. Yeah, um, uh, that kind also of added to the creepiness of things in that one, you know. This okay. is the this is at least the fourth uh, movie that we've done where it was set in a shopping mall. Oh yeah, uh, if you yeah, if you think back, um, we did Chopping Mall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did um, you know the original Dawn of the yeah. Dead. Now this one, mm-hmm. and then we also did um, uh, your favorite Elves. Oh my god! I was wondering There's what not, I was wondering what the fourth movie you'd pull out of your ass would be. Elves. Uh, there's always got to be a oh but, my god reference. Yeah, but you're not wrong. You know, you're not oh wrong. That, that that a good portion of that took place in the mall. It was the mall Santa, right? Good lord. Yeah. 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 Well, where I mean, where, I guess you just start with this when you start where it, at the beginning because the world goes to shit real fast. I yeah. do like. I did like in this one that they didn't waste any time with it. Yeah. 
You yeah. know, like they really did get to the point. Like, you know, yeah, you set up who Anna is. She's a nurse. She comes home. There's a little bit of character going on there. You introduce to, a, you know, the little girl, a couple others. But mm-hmm. then like that, by the time they go to bed, you know, and they wake up the next morning, the world has, you know, the worm has turned, right? Like mm-hmm. that fast. And like her world becomes a nightmare in like five minutes. How'd you like to wake up like that too, right? Like, God, man, that'd be rough. A fucking creepy girl who zombied out just wanders into your room, <laughs> bites your bites like the carotid artery of your husband's neck. He's basically bleeds to death and then turns around and starts attacking you. You know, like, and you haven't even woke up and had any coffee yet. It's like, what the fuck is going on? You know? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but I do like that. It's like, and it literally is like a thousand miles an hour for, you know, the next 10, 15 minutes after that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, she, yeah, great she, hook. She has to get away. You know, then you see how this has affected everything really fast. She meets up, you know, like we said in the description with that group, and then they make it to the mall. This all takes place, what, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. I mean, it it happens pretty fast. But I, I I do love that, like, it it just slaps you across the face right here in the beginning. Like, all right, get ready because this movie is going to be nuts, you know? That's what I talked about, mm-hmm. the pace of it, frenetic, yeah. fast pace. The mall. They get to the mall, and they – they find a couple of redneck security. There's three, like, well, I guess like two kind of redneck security guards, right? Two that are kind of on a power trip. Yeah. And then one that's kind of, you know, hey, we shouldn't act like this. But I do like that when they're watching TV, trying to figure out what the hell's going on here, you get the Tom Savini cameo. Remember, it's yeah. basically that part in the original, what it's that guy from the original Night of the Living Dead at the end. It's like the sheriff taking, taking people around, like mm-hmm. groups, like, uh, what would you call it? Not mercenaries, but like a uh, lynch mob, basically like lynch mobs yeah. going around, like taking out the zombies and stuff. And then you see that kind of play out again in the original Dawn of the Dead where this guy's on TV. Like, yeah, what you got to do is that's, this one's a twitcher and you got to shoot him in the head. You know, like he's explaining what has to happen. Mm-hmm. Tom Savini plays that part in this movie. Yeah. It's a brief cameo, but it's still a cool cameo, right? Getting yeah. Tom Savini in there. And then you get one of the main characters from the original dawn of the dead ken Faree, you know the actor ken Faree, yeah. he has a cameo in this one as well as one of the guys on tv explaining what's going on so that was another cool cameo and, I, and it seems like there was another cameo or two because i saw something now i've lost it of people that were in the original or had something to do with that um, stuff that were that there was actually a store called galen ross yeah i did, and, I did uh, notice that i forgot yeah. about that one yeah I was like, why does that sound so familiar? That's not a real store, is it? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting lost. <laughs> yeah. Haven't we uh, uh, also figured out that we've watched the entire filmography of Galen Ross <laughs> as an actress? Because like she was only in like three movies. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, she, that's right. I forgot about that. As far as an actress, I think she went on to like produce documentaries and shit like that. But as far as an, uh, uh, as an actor is concerned, she was in the original Dawn of the Dead. Um Oh, I was going to pull it up real fast just so I wouldn't miss miss one. Yeah, uh, she was she, in the original Dawn of the Dead. She was in Mad Man. Remember when we did that? Yeah. And that was in uh, Camp Spook Show, right? And uh, Creep Show. She was in one of the segments in uh, Creep Show. So we've done the entire filmography of Galen Ross. <laughs> her act, yeah, at least Act, her, acting, uh, acting act. wise, yeah, because she has directed and produced a bunch of other stuff. But I think they said awesome. Mad Man was the thing that really like turned her off from doing anything else ever again. Like, you know... <laughs> Dawn of the Dead was probably a pleasure. You know, she was barely in creep shows, so like Madman in between was probably like, you know what, this this ain't for me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let me get behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so in this one though, that's another difference with Dawn of the Dead, the original one, is that remember in that one, they don't really add too many people. People show up and they kinda have bad intentions. So yeah. that movie is more like we need to protect our land kind of thing. This one they actually take on more people. You know, there's at least one bigger second group that shows up, including the wheelbarrow woman. <laughs> now, uh, yeah. now, as soon as I saw her, I'm like, why the fuck are you letting this woman in the mall? Like, <laughs> she already looks like a zombie, right? Like, yeah, she's she's already, you know, she's already kind of brownish. She's yeah. she's decaying. Yeah, <laughs> um, she's already like. It looks like gang like, gangrene is setting in. She's half yeah, dead. Yeah, she's ar- <laughs> she's already the same color of uh, you know, like her her skin color is the same same color as uh, uh, those hot dogs that uh, <laughs> at the seven down at the Seven Eleven. 
No, down, down from uh, nothing but trouble. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and she kind of looks like Dan Arkwood's character. The oh, judge. <laughs> she kind of looks <laughs> like awesome. him. Matt, you say that. Um, uh, weird. But no, I was just more or less pointing it out like, in this scenario where you have to like uh, assume everybody is, you kind of have to be pessimistic, right? You'd have to be like, just to protect yourself and your, and your yeah. others. You'd have to be like, there's mo- most likely this woman's infected. We can't let her in here, but now they just wheel her right on in. And, and then they're surprised when she dies and becomes a zombie. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I saw her, I'm like, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wheel her ass in there. I, I'm sorry. I'd have to leave her outside. Um, how do you like, t- we were talking about the music earlier. How do you like the, uh, the disturbed, the sickness cover <laughs> by old Richard cheese? <laughs> uh, that was rough, man. Yeah, that was I awesome was... though. It just comes out of nowhere. It's like, Oh shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, get up, come on, get down. You know, you you talk about you know mid two thousands. That was <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very two, that's the two thousand four is hanging out for sure. Like yeah, it's, it's mid two thousands that Richard Cheese type stuff. Um, well, I mean, you can't move any further past this though. When you get to the zombie baby scene, how fucked up is that? <laughs> I remember I mean, even they, back then, like, God damn, man, that's fucked. I mean, if you, you know, if you're really going to, I don't know, kind of push the, push the envelope, I mean, put some cringe in there. Or, well, they, yeah. I mean, they did it. And you're, you're wondering the whole time if they're really going to do it, you know, because like this one, one of the one is one of the original survivors. Uh, she's there, she's pregnant. And then she just kind of disappears from the movie for a while. Like you don't see her for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, Makai Pfeiffer's character is her husband, right? Or her boyfriend, mm-hmm. whatever. He, he, yeah. you know, and he's kind of pr- protecting her. So, like, you don't see her. Well, it turns out he, she's basically dying in there, right? And he's got her, yeah. like, strapped down to the bed. But he's still trying to get her to deliver the baby. And she dies on the table, like, mid-labor, right? Yep. And basically he still forces the issue with the baby. And the a zombie baby is born, <laughs> and once again, like you're sitting there, like, well, okay, well, they went there. She's had this thing now. Is that thing still alive? Is it a zombie? Sure yeah, enough, they, they cut away. They, yeah, they cut. Yeah. But then they pull the blanket back, and then it's, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's. A, I'm sorry. What is it? It's a. It's a zombie baby. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. But they do cut. Yeah, you're right. They don't go all the way across the bridge. They do cut away when you hear the shot or something, right? Like you don't see yeah. it. You don't see them do that. But yeah, either way, that was a pretty, pretty gnarly scene. Um, but like you said, if you're gonna go for the gore, if you're gonna go for the the big moments that'll have people talking, that was one of them. Because I remember mm-hmm. that at the time, like wow, you know, they they, they went there. Okay, zombie baby. <laughs> Right there, uh, this probably might have been, uh, could have been at least slightly more upsetting to you because it involved the dog, right? The the dog Chips. Uh, Chip, but Chips was okay, right? Well, yeah, he was least, fine. But just We'll get to what happens to him nah. arguably at the end there. But uh, they there's a, the whole movie, there's this guy named Andy who's on the roof of a, like a gun shop across the street from the mall. So they kind of have, a, they have like white, erase boards that they talk to each other back and mm-hmm. forth and look at binoculars. Yeah, that was cool. And, um, so he kind of becomes a side character and they eventually like the dude's starving out over there. Right. So yeah. they decide like the way we're going to fix this is we're going to, the zombies are ignoring chips, the dog. So we're just going to put food on his back and pouches, send him over there. He'll deliver some food and everything will be all right. He gets in the little doggy door or whatever. And of course the zombies get in and they take out Andy, but Andy basically gets zombified. Because Chips is a, a fucking idiot dog, he lets the <laughs> he lets the he lets the zombies in. Yeah, he kind of <laughs> looks like Rip Torn a little bit too. <laughs> no, just I was like, holy, no way to say it. No, yeah, no, that's not. But they have to deal with the consequences of that. When I, I forget the the character's name, the the one girl that like lost her dad. That was uh, um, Matt Frewer's uh, um, character. She Nicole. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nicole. She's immediately become attach, attached to this dog. So she kind of goes rogue and is like, no, I'm going to go fucking save the dog, even though there's a good chance the dog is dead. So that kind of starts the chain reaction of the end of the movie, though, right? Because mm-hmm. now they got to go send a party of three or four people over to get her out of there, 
see if she's alive. Of course, but Andy, they also need they, uh, Andy also has a whole bunch of guns. Well, yeah, he's got it's a gun shop, so he, there's a yeah. whole arsenal over there. So yeah, that was kind of the you know side mission, right, is to get ammo and guns and everything, but also to try to save her and maybe Andy, yeah. right? They're, they they're not clear whether Andy's still alive or not. Of course, to get over there, Andy's a zombie. They have to take him out. By the way, that was one of the better zombie kills too, right? Because oh yeah, I mean he fucking blows his head clean off of that shotgun. <laughs> Yeah, he Mo- really does. Man. Most of them are kind of like half measures, but this one's like, boom, his head's gone. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Chip survived, so I'm sure you were happy about that. He was he was fine over there. Yeah. And yeah, he died actually, with, uh... with Chips. Good old Chips. <laughs> He's still kicking. Um. So this whole time leading up to before this, though, they had found a couple of shuttle, bu- like mall shuttle buses, and they decided to fortify them, make them into like, fortified tanks so to speak right so they could get out of there eventually yeah they basically did this uh um almost every week on the a-team back when we were kids (laughs) almost every single episode except for the uh the chainsaw slot right they made like a little (laughs) slot on the side where they could stick a chainsaw through and like which was awesome yeah yeah it's a good little touch but it turns it it turns bad on them here in just a minute but um they eventually like because of the chain reaction of like Oh fuck! Now the zombies are getting in because they had to go out and deal with the Andy situation and chips. Uh, now they have to basically get in the shuttle buses and get the fuck out of there. Um, in the melee of trying to that. By the way, that was an awesome scene when there uh, there's there's two shuttle buses, and then they the guy jumps out of the top. I, I think maybe it's CJ. I can't remember who did, but he jumps out of the top and he shoots that propane tank in the uh, in yeah, the crowd CJ. of zombies. Dude, that was a that was an awesome shot. You have to yeah. admit, like. How yeah. many zombies do you think are out there in this small parking lot? Fucking thousands, right? At this point, there's thousands of zombies out there, and they're just trying to drive through them, and they blow up a propane tank, and that takes them out enough for them to wheel away. But, like, that was an awesome shot, just seeing that wave of zombies, you know, <laughs> in the process to get away. They're doing the, the chainsaw bit. I want to say it's, I can't remember who did it. It's the one guy that's kind of like a creepy kind of guy that's a part of the group. He kind of trips with the chainsaw. And oh, I think yeah. It's, it's I, the older man. It was yeah, the, yeah, uh, kind of a, yeah, the kind older of a, guy. Yeah. He, he kind of trips with the chainsaw when the car, the, the shuttle bus moves, and he just chainsaws her in half. I think it's Monica, right? I think it was her name. Yeah, Monica. He just, yeah. and so like now that, I guess something happened to him in the fray too there, because like mm-hmm. they look back and they're dead. Um, but that also, basically they're down to one bus at that point, right? And then I think CJ has to, yeah, well, he, he gets in, the, the survivors of that get into the other bus. They make it down to the marina because that's what they're trying to do now. Like, they've abandoned the mall. The mall is is gone. They have to go get to a boat. That's uh, their, their feeling is if they can get on a boat and then they can sail that boat to an island. To like an island. To an yeah. island somewhere where there wouldn't be any zombies. And it makes, you know, it sound logic, right? You would think. As long as it's a fairly uninhabited island, this would be a safe idea. So they make it down to the marina, eventually get inundated again. Um, CJ has to basically like, uh, I think he like pops a hole in one of the propane tanks that are inside the bus and then has to like flare, shoot it, boom. It explodes, takes out everything that's there. That allows them to get on the boat and get away. But in this process, uh, Michael is bit. So he basically just has to like help him shove the boat off and that's it. Like they have to leave him because, you know, it's only a matter of time before he turns into a zombie. And that's basically how it ends is Michael's kind of standing on the dock, looking at, you know, waving goodbye, so to speak. And then he stands there for a few minutes and then puts a bullet in his own head because he's about to become a zombie. He kills himself. Yep. Credits. But during the credits, <laughs> you get camcorder footage of them arriving. Like that. now they've found a camcorder on the boat and they decided to film it or whatever. They arrive at this island Chips the dog, you know, he just takes off running. You never see him again. But, of course, as soon as they land, you see a group of zombies come running up. And that's basically throughout, I think it plays pretty much throughout the entire credits, right? Like, yeah. it keeps cutting back and forth to, it went to shit. Apparently, they, you know, they pretty much yeah. didn't survive this, right? Like, they get there, the island is covered in zombies, and they're fucked. So. Yeah, but Chips survives. I, I, well, we assume. Because the <laughs> zombies won't mess with him, so I guess. Uh, yeah. Chips is the Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. We watch a movie where 
basically everybody presumably dies except the dog. Yep. So there so, you go. Yeah. yeah. Donnie left with a <laughs> smile on his face. So there you go. That's uh, Zack Snyder's Zack Snyder's reimagining Dawn of the Dead from 2004. So um, I guess I'll start with the star rating because this was my nomination. Mm. Hold on, because I think it's fair to compare this to when we did uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead last year. So yeah. I found that. Okay, the ratings for that one. Smoke and I gave that one five stars. You gave that one four and three quarter stars. Mm. And Will gave it four and a half. So we had a consensus of 4.8 stars for, oh, the, wow. for the original yeah. Dawn of the Dead. So not many higher, I don't think, than that here for the uh, Spook Show podcast. So that being said, this is not five stars. Um, Definitely. I think I would have, I, I wouldn't have necessarily gone five stars even back in 2004. Um, but I probably no. would have rated it a little higher back then than I do this time around. Cause you kind of alluded to that as well. I can't say that I disagree there, but I'm not going to dock it by a whole hell of a lot because I think putting it in its time context, 2004, it's very much of that time. Like I said earlier than say the original Dawn is of 1978. Um, I think you got plenty of action. The, the pacing is well, you got, you know, a good amount of gore. You've got a, a, ha- a good handful of Holy fuck moments with the zombie baby stuff and the, the big epic explosions and waves of zombies and everything like that. So you get plenty of cool action, zombie action. You get a lot of comedy sprinkled in there with the James Gunn touch, right? There, mm. there are comic relief moments and everything. I think the cast is good. So I, I can't go as high as the original, but I'm, I always, I've seen this a number of times and I always enjoy it. And even though it doesn't hold up as much as I enjoyed it back in 2004, I still love it 19 years later. So I'm going to say for me, I'm going to go four stars. So what do you say? Yeah. Um, so I'm a little lower, uh, not by much, but you know, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, it's, it's, definitely more action than it is horror for me. Like I didn't, you know, there's, I mean, yeah, you, you do have the gore, um, but also can I give it a different title altogether? You know, don't even connect it to Romero. And uh, I might actually give it, you know, it may, it may hold a little bit more weight than it does with me, but yeah, my, my star ratings, I, I'm going to give it a three and a half. I mean, I still, you know, still enjoy it. Yeah. St- Still would watch it, um, you know, again, um, but it just, it doesn't hit on everything it doesn't, for me. It doesn't hold up quite as well as I thought it would, you know, no. upon watching it now, 19 years later, whatever. And, and frankly, it's probably been 10 years ago since I watched it the last time. It's been a while. Mm. Um, yeah. so it didn't quite hold up as much as I thought it would, but still, I think it's a, I think it, I still think it's one of the better. It's definitely one of the better remakes of a horror movie. Um, I'm not saying it's the best or anything, but it's one of the better ones, right? It's 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 closer to the Evil Dead side of the ledger than it is, say, a House of the House of Wax side of the ledger, right? As far as remakes are concerned. So listen, you said it. You, know, you said just, it, huh? I did, House of Wax <laughs> is my bar of like remakes that suck, you know. So like yeah. <laughs> that that like it's way it's way over here. It's closer to Evil Dead remakes, right? It's over here than it is that side. So I'll leave that there, but all right. So, uh, we're not done quite done with this one just yet. Connections. Connections. (laughs) All right. Laughing boy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Cast side, uh, we've got Tom Savini, big surprise here. Uh, plays the sheriff, you know, does the cameo at, um, at the beginning um, connects back to the original Dawn of the Dead from 78 uh, Friday the 13th uh, when we covered that back in Mother's Day I think it was uh, early on in the in the show um, and also Creep Show so that's that's the cast side the crew side is a little a little more a little longer here uh, so we've got George Romero obviously uh, Dawn of the Dead the original Night of the Living Dead from 68 and Creep Show. Um, and then also, this is more of a consensus similar to, um, well, we'll just get to it. Um, makeup effects, specifically prosthetics. 
there was a, a number of uh, uh, connections, but uh, I'm sorry, a, no, a number of crew members, but uh, really dates back to these past six episodes. Uh, we've got um, It Chapter 2, The Witch, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, Hellraiser, Bloodline, Snakes on a Plane. Mm. Just last and, week. Yeah, and your favorite. No, oh, no. Ready? Mm-hmm. The Garbage Pail Kids. Movie. Oh, what the... There's a handful that are always going to come back and haunt me. That's one of them. Yeah. And... So, uh, yeah, prosthetics, uh, makeup effects from those movies. What a horrible job in that movie. Garbage Pail Kids. Prosthetics. I'd, That's... I'd take the check. <laughs> well, I guess you can't blame him for that. <laughs> he cashed it. That's not his fault they gave it to him. All right, so we don't have Will here for the kill count, but God knows, like has been the theme of uh, the summer disaster, Good luck putting a number on this, right? Mm. I'm sure there is a number of what you saw on screen, but this is literally like could be a hundred and something that you kind of see, or it could be like the entire world's population because, you know, the world just literally goes to shit. So who knows? But let's talk about the kill reel. I like kill. You know, this one's tough because like, I think <clears throat> you kind of come between the, the difference of like, say that was a really impressive kind of kill on screen kill versus mm. a moment that just kind of like, Oh man, that's fucked up. But I'm going to go with zombie Andy getting, oh, his, yeah. getting his head blown off with the shotgun. Cause that was pretty like, Oh shit. You know, like, and there's a lot of, Oh shit moments in this movie. So it's hard to kind of peg it down. But I, I the only other one that comes to mind is just the whole zombie baby thing, you know, like, cause that's one of those ones that sticks with you. Like, Oh man, that's fucked up, you know, but, but it's not like necessarily an on-screen kill either. Cause yeah, you see what I guess between the mom and then the dad and then the old lady that walked in there smoking or whatever, right? <laughs> you see three people go down before they have to take the baby out, but you don't see them take the baby out. So it's kind of like, it's more of a fucked up scene than it is something you really yeah. saw, right? <clears throat> so I think I'm going to have to go with zombie Andy getting his head shotgun blasted off. Cause that was pretty... Uh, pretty brutal as far as the zombie kills are concerned. And there's a lot of good ones here, so you could you could go in a lot of different directions, like just like Andy's head did. Um, <laughs> we <insane>. don't <laughs> we don't have smoke here to give the gore score, but I would imagine this is pretty high. Yeah, I don't know if he'd yeah. go ten, but good lord, I'd be surprised if anything less than eight or nine, right? So mm. we'll take we'll take bets. Maybe maybe we'll see what he has to say about it uh, next time he gets a chance to give us his thoughts. But yeah, that's it. As far as uh, Dawn of the Dead is concerned, um, there's plenty of other of the dead stuff that we have to do yet. So, you know, we will come back to the world of Romero and the world of the zombies one of these days. But as far as the spook show summer disaster co is concerned, we're, we're pretty much closing up the book. That's yeah. that's pretty much it. We do have one more thing left on the on the docket, one more thing left on the ledger. And that will come out later this week over on our YouTube channel. Our latest... Um, Video Vortex, Video Vortex number four, Sharknado, The Fourth Awakens. That will actually technically be the last movie that we watch here for the Spook Show Summer Disaster. So you want to go check out aaspookshow.com and go check out our YouTube page for that. That should be coming out probably Wednesday or Thursday this week over on our YouTube channel. So you want to see that. But then next week, um, episode 174, that will be the proper Summer Disaster wrap up. We'll kind of give our final thoughts, maybe talk about a few things we, you know, we, we loved, we hated just everything just to kind of put the, the proper bloody red bow on the spook show summer disaster and put out the, put out the last embers of fi fires and flames. And hopefully the world has been saved and we'll survive for another summer by the end of next week. So that's the way we're going to officially end the spook show summer disaster next Monday. But then following that, we're going to get back on regularly, regularly, scheduled programming and Donnie, it's your choice episode 175. So what are you going to yeah. bring? What are you bringing for us? So, yeah. Um, you know, this is kind of a big, big episode, uh, number 175. So I am going dipping into hammer horror. And I think this might be, uh, the first hammer movie we've done. Yes, I think for we the have, for the main podcast, yeah, we have not done any um, po podcast proper. We've only kept it over to the 
the YouTube series. So yeah, this will be it. Yeah. So, uh, um, dip it into hammer from, uh, 1957, the curse of Frankenstein. Which, Pretty excited about which this. If one. you have been watching our hammer horror in order series over on YouTube, where we literally watch, we've been watching the hammer horror and thrillers in the order in which they were released. So chronologically starting in, uh, what year was that? 1955 with the Quatermass mm-hmm. mass experiment. That was the first one. Well, the curse of Frankenstein was the third one that we did all the way back. Literally after Christmas last year, it came out December 29th, 2022 on our YouTube channel. So if you're looking for it, Hammer Horror in Order number three, The Curse of Frankenstein 1957, all the way back in uh, this past December. But the thing is over there, we don't do a deep dive. We don't do the, the kind of ins and outs deep dive that we take here on the Spook Show podcast. So up to this point, I th- believe this is the highest rated movie that we have done over there on on the YouTube series. So it'll be interesting to see what we have to say about it. We can take a deeper dive, talk about some of the background, all that stuff. So, and just having a movie of that, uh, of hammer films, but also like the older movies, we don't have a lot of them show that we've done over the years. So that'll be cool. Lots of cool angles to take here. Plus just having another chance to sit down and watch that one and take a deeper dive into it. It was a good, it'd be fun, man. Yeah, Good pull. So that's how we're going to get back on the, on the regular spook show train is by watching The Curse of Frankenstein from 1957. And then after that, we're going to be heading back to Cannon Fodder. And we're not quite ready yet to tell you what that's going to be. But just know it's well, ca- it's canon, and uh, it could be anything. <laughs> it, it could be anything. We'll say that. So we'll just leave that there for now. So, yeah, um, yeah lots of big things coming up. And, and, of course, after that, dude, we're going to be on a fast fucking train to our, our year-end type stuff. We're going to have the Spook Show Awards coming up at the beginning of October. We're going to have our fifth anniversary special. We got lots of cool stuff coming up in the month of October. So you, you'll definitely want to, uh, it'll, it'll start ratcheting up really. I think, you know, Damn. in earnest with, uh, the curse of Frankenstein. So it'll be yep. here before you know it. Yeah, no doubt. So we'll leave it there. So for Will and smoke who decided just to stay on vacation instead of come coming to check this out for Donnie. I'm Josh. We are from the All-American Spook Show, and we will talk to you next week for the Spook Show Summer Disaster Wrap-Up Special. So goodbye, everybody, and remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight.